Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Mountain Blade Bannerlord and we're bringing you another troop analysis video. So this one is top five best standard archers. So this is going to be what you're going to see from most of your common troop trees coming out of towns and villages. This is going to be the bulk of the archers you see in the game. With that in mind, like all of the lists on here, we have uh, various factors going into this being primarily their average troop rating, which comes mostly from their top skills. Uh, and then after that, we've got certain factors like how good's their armor, you know, do they have any extra weapons, does anything put them aside, uh, so that all factors into it. So it's a pretty accurate list, but uh, obviously, if you have any disagreements or anything like that, I always invite you to leave that down in the comment section so we can get a discussion going there. Uh, but with that in mind, let's just start at number five. So at number five, we have the Vlandian Sharpshooter, which I thought would have uh, ranked higher in my list until I d started digging into it a little bit, because I do love these troops. They make excellent troops in the game. Uh, but as you might be able to tell from this picture, they, generally speaking, do not spawn with a secondary melee weapon. Despite having a lovely shield, the Pavis shield is one of the best in the game, because it just offers full body total protection. The thing's just amazing. Uh, and it's super thick. Look how thick that bad boy is. It's probably super heavy. But anyway, so these are our crossbow troops. So you can see they actually have pretty decent heavy armor. Uh, nice kettle uh, kettle helm. Good all around, but without a secondary weapon, you know, I can't rank them too high. So let's check out where they are in the troop tree. So the Vlandian Sharpshooter is on the far left. You go through the Levy Crossbowman, the Crossbowman, the Hardened Crossbowman, and the Vlandian Sharpshooter. So key stats here are Crossbow of 130 and Athletics of 130. Unfortunately, they're brought down significantly because they're one-handed as 130. That would normally rank them very high, but unfortunately, they don't have one-handed weapons most of the time. I, I don't know if I've ever seen them spawn with one-handed weapons, but I guess we'll, we'll see that in this video for sure. Uh, so that brings them down. So their average troop rating, or ATR, is actually only 87 uh, their biggest plus is that they have a good shield. So if you're using them in a mixed uh, formation, they actually provide decent defense for other troops as well. So let's see what they look like in combat. So let's take a look and see if they have anything. Uh, yeah, like I said, not seen any weapons. So we're not going to charge this time. We're going to tell them to form a line. But in any case, they'll be able to take them out. Archer-only uh, battles are are usually pretty dang fun. So, as you can see, pretty effective still. Uh, like I said, their main weakness being that they don't have a secondary melee weapon that they can use when they run out of ammo or when troops get a little too close. But with that in mind, you know, if you're using them intelligently, that shouldn't be too much of an issue. So they are still a very good uh, archer troop. So that was number five, the Vlandian Sharpshooter. Let's move on to number four. So at number four, we have one that I uh, utilize pretty heavily in the game, the Azurai Master Archer. So as you can see, they've got decently heavy armor. They utilize a short bow, but they have two quivers of arrows, giving them, you know, pretty high capacity. And they also have a secondary weapon, which, you know, automatically puts them above the last ones. So here they have a long one-handed saber type weapon. So let's look what they look like in the troop tree. So the Azurai Master Archer is again going to be far to the left, so you got the Tribesman, Skirmisher, Archer, Master Archer. Key stats for the Azurai Master Archer are going to be one-handed of 80, bow of 130, and athletics of 130, giving them an average troop rating of 113. And uh, for this one, I made a special note of some perks. They have good arrows, extra arrows, and pretty dang good armor, especially for an archer troop. They're pretty heavily armored, so uh, that would be how they get their number four spot. So let's see what they look like in combat. Alright, so I'm just going to set them up a little bit closer here, and then they're going to wait for the charge because they're just going to shoot all the bad guys. So, let's just watch them do what it is they do. So, as you can see, another total annihilation battle. Uh, making me, uh, it adds to the thing that I say to a lot of people who play games like this. You don't use enough archers, because, man, they are just so good on the field. So, like I said, that was number four, the Azurai Master Archer. Let's move on to number three. So, at number three, we have the Kuzate Marksman, one of the uh, cooler-looking troops in the game. So, here again, you can see, as is with as is common with elite Kuzate troops, we have pretty decent lamellar armor offering total body protection. A nice helmet, uh, two quivers of arrows, so that's nice. Uh, they, again, use a curved step, uh, sort of a short bow, and have a backup weapon as a one-handed saber. You know, it's a decently short one, but at least they have one. So, let's see what they look like in the troop tree. 
So the Kuzate Marksman, you can see her through the Footman tree. So you go Footman, Hunter, Archer, Marksman. Uh, key stats for the Kuzate Marksman are going to be one-handed of 80, bow of 130, and athletics of 130, giving them an ATR of 113, which you may notice is the same as the Azurai one. Uh, however, these ones have better armor than before, and they, again, have extra arrows, like the Azurai Master Archers do, but these ones are actually better arrows. They're Bodkin arrows, I believe, which makes them very good against armored opponents. So, let's see what these guys look like in combat. Alright, so as you can see, they've got a pretty uniform appearance, uh, appearance, which, you know, is awesome because of their excellent armor. So let's just, uh, see how they do. So again, as you, uh, may be getting used to in this, uh, video so far, pretty easy battle. Generally speaking, especially if you have high numbers, uh, on your side, you know, and you've got a lot of archers going, the troops don't even get to you. So again, that was number three, the Kuzate Marksman. Let's move on to the runner-up at number two. So our runner-up at number two is the Sturgeon Veteran Bowman. And now you may be like, what? Look how light their armor is. But trust me, these guys are really good. So as you can see, they've got a sort of light leather uh, sort of feeling chest armor. Same goes for the gloves. They do have chainmail boots, so good foot protection. Decent helmet offering uh, enough vision up front, still offering decent neck and head you know, inside protection. Uh, they utilize a small, short bow, much like m many on this list, a uh, one-handed uh, arming sword, and then two things of what I believe are piercing arrows, which are some of the best arrows in the game. So let's see what they look like in the troop tree. So the veteran bowman, you can see, goes way off to the right here. So through the woodsman, hunter, archer, veteran bowman. Uh, key stats for the Sturgeon veteran bowman are going to be one-handed of 130, bow of 130, and athletics of 130, uh, giving them an average troop rating of 130. The only con here uh, for these guys, because that's a pretty good average troop rating, but the only con here is that they do have very light armor. So if they get overwhelmed or people get in too close, they are relatively easy to cut down. So these guys are pretty dang good for castle defense. You know, when they can rain down like that, but on the open field, they suffer against other archers on this list. So let's see how these guys look in combat. Alright, so let's just set them up and let them do what they do. So, as you can see, once again, pretty dang good troops. Uh, yeah, not much to say about them. They're pretty, pretty consistent with the other ones, except for, you know... A little bit better hand-to-hand -hand combat, a little bit better uh, athletics, you know, all around good troops. So let's move on to the best archer, or the best standard archer in the game, at number one. So at number one, we have the Imperial Palatine Guards, which not only are the best standard archers in the game, but overall one of the best troops in the game, in my opinion. They just make excellent, they're very versatile troops. So as you can see, for what they're equipped with, they have very heavy armor, including basically the best... Uh, chest armor in the game, some really good pauldrons, uh, some heavy male boots, uh, one of the better helmets in the game. They have a strong short bow uh, backed up by a uh, some sort of a spatha, spatha looking weapon with a long blade, but it's one-handed. And then, you know, decent arrows. So let's look what, uh, see what they look like in the troop tree. So the Palatine Guard goes down through the right side, so you go through Archer, Trained Archer, Veteran Archer, Palatine Guard. The other option being the Imperial Sergeant Crossbowman, but the Palatine Guards edge them out in several ways. So the key stats here are One-Handed of 130, Bow of 130, and Athletics of 130, giving them an ATR of 130, much like the Sturgeon Veteran Bowman. However, these ones get the uh, plus side being that they have just excellent armor, some of the best armor in the game. So they're very, very strong. And their only con is that they don't have a shield. So they don't have extra arrows like many of the ones on this list do, which is, you know, an advantage for the other people on this list. Uh, and they don't make up for it with a shield, which I definitely think they should. They should be equipped with a nice small round shield or something since they have that extra spot because they don't have the arrows. So with all that in mind, uh, these are still excellent troops. So let's see how they look in combat. So let's just line them up and let them do what they do. So there you have it. At number one, we had the Imperial Palatine Guard. Like I said, edging out the Sturgeon Veteran Bowman, mostly just because of their superior armor. Uh, like I said, these troops are actually one of my favorites to use in the game. I've made up entire armies of them because they also serve as pretty decent infantry with their real only real weakness being they don't have a shield. Uh, so that is my top six lists or 
So that is my top five list of the best standard archers in Mountain Blade Bannerlord. Of course, if you have any disagreements with this list, you think the order is out of place, you think certain ones aren't as good as I said they are, you think ones are better than I said they are, whatever, you know, I, I welcome all of that uh, discussion down in the comment section where it can be of use to you know, anybody who may be interested. So I now invite you to do that. And of course, if you like this video, of course, of course, leave a like. You know, it just makes perfect sense. That's what the button's there for. Uh, but in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.